are uh, making a trip. Ashley, myself, my boy Rusty back there. Where are we headed to today, Rusty? Tell them. Pearl Harbor. That's right, we're going to see Pearl Harbor. So uh, we are going to bring you all along on a private tour through Pearl Harbor. Coming at you. We have arrived, we are at the Pearl Harbor military base right at the visitor center and uh, I want to introduce you to our guide. His name is Harold. Hey. Harold, you know that's my great grandfather's name. That's a good strong name. All right, aloha. Hey. Aloha. So Harold is going to be our tour guide for the today and uh, we're going to try to just show you um, some of what Pearl Harbor history is. Remember, understand, and honor. submarine was lost at sea. On March 26th, 1944. February 29th, 1944. March 15th, 1943. October 24th, 1944. October 3rd, 1944. And on, and on, and on. This memorial here uh, for these submarines is just super impactful. I mean, it just uh, it'll give you chills. So many of these boats just lost at sea. Um, so many of them, so many of these soldiers and uh, boatmen were actually captured as prisoners of war. Um, just the devastation. And. Uh, Imagining how these men must have felt is, is just It's a scary feeling just sitting here reading it so this, this is pretty interesting. This is the mark 37 Electric torpedo this torpedo was actually uh, Connected by a wire back to the submarine and became one of the first torpedoes They could steer underwater to try to hit their target this one here is an encapsulated harpoon missile so this missile would come out of the boat this capsule would it breach the water. Once it breached the water, then the actual missile comes out of the tip. Let's look at the tip. The missile would actually come out of that tip and then cruise low up to 69 miles to hit its target. So even though the submarine community only accounted for 2% of the entire Navy, it sank 55% of the Japanese merchant ships. That's crazy. Yeah. This would be a memorial to our Marines. And as Rusty just verified for me, the Marines were actually here guarding um, and patrolling a lot of the ships. And um, these are some of the Marines we lost here at Pearl Harbor. And these Marines here were survivors of that Pearl Harbor attack. Welcome to World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument, which is the proud home of the USS Arizona Memorial, the USS Oklahoma Memorial, and the USS Utah Memorial. Today, the U.S. Navy and the National Park Service will take you on a harbor tour of Pearl Harbor and bring you close to the USS Arizona Memorial and the valiant ship that lies beneath. We are now in the south channel of Pearl Harbor, where the infamous battleship Row was once located along the southern coast of Fort Island and off the bow of the boat as we crossed the harbor. A rate of about one to two gallons per day. 
The National Park Service and the U.S. Navy carefully monitor the site, but at this time, the oil leakage poses no environmental hazard. The Arizona Survivors Association has referred to these surfacing drops of oil as the black tears of the Arizona. Although there is no way of knowing how long the oil will seep out, many believe that the ship will continue to cry these black tears until the last survivor of the USS Arizona passes on. It's important to remember that this wasn't just an attack on Pearl Harbor. It was an attack on all of Oahu. Fifteen minutes before the assault here, Japanese aircraft struck all the military airfields around the island and neutralized American air power. Within the next 15 minutes, they neutralized American naval power here as well. This devastating blow cost the Japanese 29 planes and 56 airmen. On December 7, 1941, Pearl Harbor witnessed the dawn of a new era. As World War II came to American shores, men and women fought and died side by side. Many of them remain in these waters and in the surrounding landscapes for eternity. We, the living, are left to understand their story, remember their sacrifice, and honor their memory. You can see how the ship is still sunk and sitting underneath there. So that metal cylinder you saw sticking out when we were passing by in the boat is actually a gun turret. And they let <clears throat> and any surviving me member of the USS Arizona can have their ashes sent down that where they can rest eternally down there with their shipmates. This ship is essentially a, still a tomb. Many of the men who died with the ship, their bodies are still down in that water, forever entombed. Japan's bold plan. Their plan was to come and attack and dis disable our gunships, our battleships. It wasn't a long-term plan. They weren't doing it to try to win the war. They were doing it just to demobilize us for long enough so they could execute their plans for Midway. It was a surprise attack, uh, a cowardly attack, if you will. No warning, no nothing. They snuck in under the radar, having no idea they got the drop on us with hundreds of planes, bombs, missiles, destroying so many of our ships. This map here shows Pearl Harbor, December 7th, 1941, as it was laid out with all the ships. At that time, more than 80, 185 ships and service craft were moored here. So we are standing in the middle of the museum, and uh, one of the things I personally think is coolest about this museum is it was actually built by the survivors of the attacks on Pearl Harbor. This depicts the military strength in the Pacific, December 7, 2014. Aircraft carriers, battleships, cruisers, destroyers, submarines, military aircraft, and soldiers. The age of the battleship. Something some of you probably do not know, my grandfather on my father's side actually served on a battleship, the Washington. What are you looking at there, baby? The peace agreement to end World War II. That's right. Pretty cool. All these representatives from these countries signed these peace treaties, if you will, aboard this very ship we're standing on. The USS Reserve. So we actually called it the Instrument of Surrender. And right there, that's for the Japanese to sign the surrender. It has, uh, served for decades in our military, uh, been outfitted and served in wars uh, from the Korean War to even 
as recent as our war here in Afghanistan. It is an impressive piece of machinery, but unfortunately the battleship is now outdated. The aircraft carrier has taken its place. Nonetheless, a ton of beautiful history right here in the Hawaii Islands. And now the return flight to Maui. Rusty? <laughs> Wow, that was quite, if you had any hair, if your, your hair would have been flowing if you had hair on that snap. Sure would. He was like, it's a short flight, 30, 30 minute flight, and then we're there. I do. How oh, are you? Yeah. Cool. Now that's a welcome to Maui. Like it was just automatic.